Welcome to the Jack and John podcast. I'm Jack. And I'm John. And we're on a mission. To help you focus on Christ. Well, you can tell by our surroundings if you're watching that we're still here with Stephanie Jeffers. We just had too much good stuff to cram into one episode. Well, we're not still here. We we went home. Oh, yeah. We went home and came back. Yeah, of came course. Back. You know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. <laughs> anyway, um, Stephanie is the founder and CEO of Grid into Grace, and we just spent a, a beautiful chunk of time with her talking about her ministry and her story. And one of the beautiful things that you do is you built this dream house and now your organization is working on the butterfly house. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, so the dream house is not a place where women live. It's where they come during the day to have all the needs met that we already talked about, uh, which is a beautiful thing. And the butterfly house will be for residential which is something that I said I would never do. So um, we have a house that was gifted to us, and we are currently, as you know, John, especially, um, we are currently demoing so we can renovate and have that become a space for women to live in transition. Um, Front door. Hey, girl, you're fine, come in. Come on in. <laughs> you're fine. I like your hair. Thank you. Oh, it's so cute. I was going to say, you cut it all. Yes, and I love it. Hi, Carson. Hi. Hellos. Hellos. Yeah, you look super cute. Can I have you? Not the crazy one painting. Hi. Yeah, you guys still painting for the weekend? Well, he gave us some other units to do, so. So, yeah, Lars back there, and yeah, there's Whitney, so you're all set. So like I said, we're at the dream house, so right. <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'm sorry, but that was a beautiful moment just because this place is alive and it's real and it's authentic and you want that door to open. Yes, I do. And so much. if it opens on us, that's great. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a, uh, we love the people who come here truly yeah. like, like family. Um, she's super special. Uh, so I said I would never do residential because that was not a part of the original dream. This was, the dream house was it. This was what we were gonna do. And I was asked over and over again, for the first year that the dream house was open, when are you gonna do residential? Are you gonna let us just stay here? Can we live here? No, no, absolutely not. I'm not doing it. I don't know how to do it. I'm not interested in doing it. <laughs> um, but sometimes I, there needs to be a little safety yes, involved, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. It just feels daunting. It's super daunting, yeah. as was the dream house, but I went for that anyway, and got surrounded with people who did, did know what they were doing. Um, but I asked one of our ladies, and we were sitting out on the front porch, and it was a beautiful day, and she kept bringing it up, and I said, okay, I'm going to ask you, why us? Why Grit and Grace? Why do you want us to do residential? And she said, because you love us. And I wow. said, that's valid. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so I began to think about it and push it back and think about it and push it back. And then COVID happened and, you know, all the things. Um, but we were given this house that is beautiful, that we'll be able to have up to eight women that can live there with the safety and covering mm -hmm. of grit and grace. And they can have a home and they can still have programs and our goal is after 12 to 15 months of programming and getting a job and making sure that they have transportation. If it's a bus, then they know how to ride the bus. If it's a car, if they need to get their driver's license, if they need to do all those things. Um, how do they save money getting a bank account open? By the time they leave the Butterfly House, we want them to be completely equipped for independent living. And so it's not... You know, just a place to crash. It's their home. They'll be given a key. That's home. Welcome home. Like, there's things to do. Um, but we really want to have a place for women to continue the transformation of their life. And so that's what we're going to do. I think it's, <laughs> and that's another beautiful thing. That's just a beautiful thing. Um, you know, and Paul tells us in Romans, you know, no longer be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what you're doing. 
Um, you're renewing their mind. And it's not so that, you know, you can take people who are rough on the outside and turn them into good little church girls. Yeah. It's so that you can take people who are rough on the outside and can't see the beauty that's on the inside and get them to transform the way that they think to realize that you are beautiful. Yeah. You are special. You are loved. And your life is worthy. Because... Jesus made you yeah. and he wants you and he wants to engage with you and be in your life. Um, that is a beautiful thing. I want to tell a quick story because I, I had the privilege of helping with the yes. demolition over there. Well, first I'm going to tell a funny story. You kicked butt. I'm going to tell I'm a funny saying. story. We're, <laughs> we're busting out this old ceiling, okay? And my creepy writer mind is waiting for a body part or something to fall out of this old ceiling because there's all kinds of gunk. And I poke that thing up and I rip that down. And Stephanie's about eight or ten feet away. And this girly magazine falls out of the ceiling <laughs> and i said oh here's a girly magazine i pick it up and chuck it and, and you said i'm not the least bit surprised <laughs> you know um, but yeah the things that we have hidden in our yes, floorboards wow. okay yeah. so but that's not the story i want to tell one of the gals i won't mention her name but she had been in that life when stephanie was there and you'd known each other yeah. And I believe it was at the courthouse or something like that. And <clears throat> she says, I saw this woman and I thought, mm, she looks familiar. I know her. Wait a minute. That can't be her. No way. And she recognized you. And she said, the reason I didn't know who she was is because when I knew her, she was the walking dead. And this woman was alive. Wow. Right. That stuck with me. Wow. That's a beautiful story. Um, and I just can't help but think of the, the prodigal son. And here's the father. Yeah. And the, you, you know, you are the prodigal son. And you're coming back. And the father sees you and says, this is my child who was dead and is now alive. Yeah, so, so much. Yeah. Yeah. And in that story, who's he saying that to? He's saying it to the older brother. Guess what? I mean, if you're in the church, don't be the older brother. Yeah. Be more like the father. That's so true. Yeah. 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 Well, Stephanie, do you have anything else that you want to share with us or any questions you have for us? I tell our listeners how they can get involved. Um, sure. Um, yeah. So we um, are located on the near east side of Indianapolis, um, the Dream House is, and also the Butterfly House. So um, we are really close to, to ladies who are working either on um, 10th Street or Washington Streets, um, huge hotbeds for prostitution on the street there, and also trafficking. Um, so we are we're, we're within walking distance, a bus ride, we're on a bus line. And so that's where we're located. If you're on our website, it's going to say Fishers. That's our mailing address. But um, we're right here in the middle of all the action on the near east side of Indianapolis. Um, we are always looking for people to volunteer in just a variety of ways. And we have people who cook meals. We have people who do yard work. We have all of our clothing and things that constantly need to be um, hung up. But we try to have a real dignified area for people to shop in. And so... Um, that's a great way for people to volunteer. Um, yeah, if, if it needs to be get done. Well, if y'all want to volunteer, we'll find something because we have plenty of things to do here. Um, and you can find us at www.gritintograce.org. And there's all the ways that you can get in contact with us there. Um, send us an email. And we'll get you connected to the right person for volunteering or for um um, having us come to your church or to your organization, and we, you know, we love to travel and talk about what we do, um, especially to humanize the women that we work with. Um, there's such a stigma attached with the with women who are in the sex industry or who even have experienced trafficking, especially as adults. Um, people just don't feel the same about that as they do minors, <laughs> and so it's really um, one of our passions is to let people in um, without ever, you know sharing too much about people's personal stories. We kind of want you to know what it's like right. for ladies um, and what that looks like in their lives. Um, just so people can grow to love them the way that we do. 
And we're always looking for financial partners. I mean, we're a nonprofit, so we continue to go because people continue to pour in and invest in the lives of these ladies and, and just to invest in what God's doing. I mean, it really, um, when we stop following God, it's not eternal anymore and I won't do it. But right now, like this is an eternal um, impact work, you know, and, and because God's at the center of it. And so if that's, you know, someone's jam and that their gift, their givers, um, that's great. You can contact us in the same manner. Um, and people to pray. We always need people to pray. There is um, just an unbelievable amount of spiritual warfare in this work. Oh, yeah. um, a lot of our ladies have, most of our ladies have had unbelievable trauma, um, which opens doors to all kinds of things. Um, a good, good handful of our women have experienced what's called satanic ritual abuse, and so that comes with a lot of its own... Um, darkness and we have come up against some things that are pretty heavy and um, so to pray for our ladies and to pray for us <laughs> as a staff and for you know our safety but also just um just continuing in our own relationships with jesus so we're strengthened and able to fight those battles you know because um, it's this is life or death work yeah. in a lot of ways you know <laughs> and um so people praying for us is just something you know something really beautiful um, and meaningful, and you know, it looks like we're out on the front lines, but I think our prayer partners are the ones that are actually out on the front mm-hmm. lines for us. And so, um, yeah, those are ways that people can uh, can get involved. And um, yeah, I think there's one thing I would like to share about our women when I think about humanizing them. And um, you know, I, I, I go back to like when we all were going through the shortage of toilet paper and all of the hoarding and all of the things that we were all doing because we were afraid we'd run out of something. And it hit me, you know, that our ladies, like I have learned in this work that women, especially women who are just sleeping in abandoned houses or couch surfing or, you know, sleeping on the streets. We have women who do all of those things. Um, If they want to use the bathroom in someone's house, they have to turn a trick. If they want to have toilet paper, they have to turn another trick. So this is not something that they do because it's fun. You know, this is not something that, you know, this is a little controversial in this work that they choose to do because if the choice is one really bad thing and another really bad thing, that's actually not choice. You know, Mm -hmm. that's just you're backed into a corner and you have to pick one. Um, Choice is... A really great option and a little lesser than option that's choice um, but for our ladies like the violence that they have endured um, you know I keep track of that for one of our grant purposes and it's astonishing to see the the just in the last calendar year the violence that they have experienced in for, from bullying to sex trafficking I mean it's it's across the board sexual assault I mean domestic violence it's just huge um, and, and they matter, <laughs> you know, their lives matter. Um, yeah, they're, they're in the throes often of addiction and, and hopelessness and despair, but this is literally what they're living every day, you know, to get toilet paper that we were all so afraid that we'd run out of, they have to turn a trick and, and that's just not okay. Mm-mm. You know, um, we have buried people. You know, we've lost women that we've loved here. Um, and it, when I say it's life or death work, it really is. Um, because this is dangerous, what they do to survive. And if it's just getting food, if it's survival sex, if it's, you know, to get diapers or to get food for their children or to get a roof over their head for the night, nobody deserves to live that way. God did not create us to live like that. And, and I, what I would love for people to understand is, I don't care what someone's done or what they look like or what side of town they're from or what their clothes look like or smell like, that woman is a daughter of Amen. the king. And she deserves to have more. And she deserves to feel love. And if Someone listening is one of those people. Wow, you deserve to feel love. Yeah. You deserve to know love. You deserve to know more. 
And there is more out there. And you just have to believe in enough to get to our door. And we'll do the rest. Like, we'll believe in you till you can't and till you can. Um, we'll help you find new dreams. We'll help you find new resources. We'll love you till you understand that you are lovable. You know? Um, yeah, so I just think, remember that they're loved. Remember that they matter. Remember that they're someone's daughter and someone's mother and someone's sister. And pray for them when you're driving down the street. Don't mock them. And if they do come to church, don't make fun of them. Right. Don't look down on them if their shirt, their skirt is too short or their neckline's too low. I really don't care. Don't make fun of them. Welcome them. Love them. Open your arms and heart to them. Um, because people often just aren't going to walk into a place like that and feel right. like, hey, we have to show them something different right. than what the world says Christianity looks like. You know, and, my, my mind is uh, wondering whether I should say this, but I think always, I should. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> The Bible says that uh, we're we can love because we Jesus first loved us, so He loved first, yes. and we need to love first. Yeah. Uh, the first fruit of the Spirit is love, yeah. and brings the others. Uh, but one of the things that is so tragic, I think, in, in, in with Christians today, especially Christian men, is the problem of pornography. Mm-hmm, so and uh, in the ministry I last had, I had started. Uh, conquer groups for men, you know, that are trying to conquer that problem. And I think that uh, we need to strive uh, for a life of purity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't hear that a whole lot anywhere. But um, I think that's available to all of us, that life of purity, because it is Jesus Christ and His blood Mm -hmm. that is the agent that purifies us from sin. When we come in contact with Christ and His love, then His blood was sacrificed and given for us that we might be made clean. Mm -hmm. And uh, to think that uh, someone who is caught up in a lifestyle of violence Mm -hmm. and necessity to do things they don't want to do, Mm -hmm. um, to have the option that that you can be made clean, that you can be made pure and holy and righteous um, through the grace and the love of God. And I think that some uh, men... Uh, some Christians need to think twice about uh, furthering the hurt uh, through what they watch and what they look at. Uh, There's a um, King James version. Sometimes I'm old enough that I used to memorize my scripture from the King James. (laughs) But uh, it's a psalm that says, I will put no vile thing before my eyes. And uh, I think that's kind of where it starts. The lust in the heart, Mm -hmm. the lust of the eyes, the pride of life that uh, the scriptures talk about. And we need to think about this loving first, loving Christ first, that we would be pleasing to him and that we would live a pure and godly life instead of aiding people uh, that are evil, that would hurt some pure person and make them something that isn't. And certainly those that know Jesus should be loving first Mm -hmm. so that they can help people. Yeah. That don't feel good. Yeah. Feel good because of what Christ has done. I heard a, a missionary one time. We were in Haiti and he was talking about um, the things they were doing. And he said, these are tools. This is a tool. These are tools to get these people to Jesus. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. I, I can't look yeah. at it that way. Yeah. I can't look at it that way. If that's all it is, then, it, then to me... It's, it's garbage yeah. because Jesus didn't use devices. Right. <laughs> he used love. Yeah, he absolutely did. He used love. And if you're making a meal for somebody as a device because you care about their soul, I mean, the soul is not detached from the person. You have to care about that person. Right. You have to love that person. And that's the thing that I think is at the crux of this whole issue. Because when we're talking about the demand side of it, yeah, oh yeah. What, what, what causes the demand? The first thing that happens with demand, and I'm talking about people using the sex industry, the consumers, is devaluing that other person. Absolutely. Not seeing them as a person. You know, we use that term uh, objectification or, you know, making that person a sex object. I I think it's even worse than that. 
you're just devaluing them as a human. And that's why I appreciate so much what you said, Stephanie, when you're saying, I just, I need to say something to make these women human. Um, uh, because they are, and we all are. You know, and we talked about this a few weeks ago when we were talking about the, the safe haven baby loss. And first point of it is valuing each person as a person, um, not because of that person, but because they are God's special creation. He's got an intent for everything. You don't happen by accident. Right. When you didn't happen by accident, that means that your creator had an intention for you. And, and part, the biggest part of that intention is to be for his glory and to be the object of his affection. Why do you have a child? You know, why does somebody want to have a child? Because they want to love yeah. that child. Yeah. And that's why, you know, for me, it's like my kids, they're good kids. But they could do anything. They're still my kids. Yeah. That's how Jesus is. And even more, he sees all of us as his children. He loves us. Um, and so, yeah, I, I want to, you know, we're, you're talking, we're sitting here and I'm thinking, we got two men that are just sitting here silent dumbfounded, not knowing what to say, because what can we say? You know, because, and I'll, I'll be real frank, when it comes to your ministry, one of the things that's been a challenge for me is I can't do what these girls do. Okay. I, I can't be that person who comes alongside these women because I'm a threat to them. Yeah. I don't have to do anything to be a threat. Yes, so yeah, but I'm a threat to them just because I'm a man. Yeah. And and that's a sad statement on, on our culture and on our world. It's not a sad statement on them. I don't blame them. Yeah. I'd feel uncomfortable too. Um, but it starts with valuing that person, loving that person, extending grace to that person, knowing that they are a person and that they're created a child of God. Um because you know what? He wants us all to be in that dream house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because that's where you belong. Yeah, so much so. That is where you belong. Anything else? I feel like we've covered it. I think so, too. Yeah, I think we've nailed it, hopefully. I, 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 I feel like it. Um, I, I, again, I love you. I love what you're doing. I love your story. Um, and there's so much that, that we didn't even touch on one of the things that you said too is I know that there were people praying for you when you were in those dark moments. Um, and I know that you felt some of the power of that prayer in the right moments. So folks, thanks for having me. This has been a beautiful time. Stephanie, thanks so much. Um, Jack, thanks for your wisdom as always. (laughs) Mike, thank you. Thank JD for uh, doing our music. Um, thank the Dream House and Grid into Grace for welcoming welcoming us in here. And we brought donuts. And we did bring donuts. That's right. <laughs> so, and thank you for listening. Um, we love you guys. Tune in next time. Share us with your friends. And you've got all the links in there for Grid into Grace. If you don't do Help. anything else, Help. please pray. pray. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.